Hello everyone, welcome back. Please comment, rate, subscribe, folks, comment, rate, subscribe, like the videos, also share the videos. I want to thank everyone that does like, watch, and share my videos. You folks are the absolute best. Listen, folks, there's a link tree down below. It has the links to all of my social media platforms. Please go down there, follow me across all my social media platforms and talk to me because I'll talk back. Also down there as well as the links to all of my YouTube pages. Please go down there, subscribe to all my YouTube pages and turn on your notifications so when I post content, you folks will be in the know. So with that said and done and put to the side, I'm going to talk to you folks today about the New York Jets safety position. Boy, oh boy, I could not wait to talk about this position group. You know, this position group has a lot of really solid, versatile players. It really, really does. Now, I'm not going to mention every single one of our safeties here. That's going to take too long. I'm just going to mention a couple of the main guys and speak about what I think that they're going to bring to the table this season. So, I'm going to start with Marcus May. And one of the reasons I'm going to start with Marcus May, as we all know, there was a deadline for the New York Jets to get a kind of a contract done with him, which was July 15th. Uh, as we know, he was franchised. They had been trying to work out a deal. Robert Sella had come out and talked about it. Joe Douglas had come out and talked about it. You know, how much they wanted him back. And then things started to get ugly as the deadline creeped up. You know, about 48 hours before that deadline was, you know, was, was, was there, uh, you started to see things get leaked, things being reported. Uh, a lot of it supposedly was coming from Marcus May's camp about how the New York Jets had offered him 20% less than the franchise tag that he was playing on. Uh, that, you know, they had offered the New York Jets, they had made a, a counter offer, and then they pulled it off the table because the Jets did not respond. So July 15th came, and now it's gone, and there's still no deal on the table, so that deadline is done. The New York Jets will then have to now, you know, work on a deal with him this next coming offseason and see if they can keep Marcus May. If they can't work out a deal, he might get franchised again. So that's something that could be on the horizon there. But when I look at Marcus May, I say to myself, wow, this dude is something else. Like serious, serious business. And I was telling, I told people this, even when we had Jamal Adams, I looked at Marcus May and I said, this guy is the best safety on our team. And it's because of how he can be utilized. This guy is a Swiss army knife and he does a lot of things well. And I think a lot of people don't you know, look at him and see these things because some of the things that he does, they don't show up on a stat sheet, but they show up when you watch him and particularly when a lot of guys around the NFL watch him on film. His coverage ability allows you to do a lot of things within your scheme because he can, you know, keep guys under wraps that usually will be going off if you send a blitzer. A lot of the times when we had Jamal Adams back in the day, remember that guy that went crazy and <laughs> completely tried to obliterate the football team? Well, one of the reasons why he was able to get all those sacks and be the blitzing safety, you know, that everybody was raving about him being was because you was able to put Marcus May back there in coverage and he would be able to hold things down while Jamal Adams was running around, you know, like a man on fire. So I look at May and his versatility this year and I say to myself, OK, we're moving to a 4-3 scheme away from the 3-4. Let's see how Sulla and Jeff Albers is going to utilize him. Because again, he's a guy that not only is good in coverage, you can bring him up into the box. We've seen him come down and lay the lumber and run support. And I'm wondering, are they going to utilize him as a blitzer this year? Could this be the year where we see Marcus May get some of the sack totals that we saw, you know, Jamal Adams get? I mean, May had, again, you look at it this year, there was, there was a couple of games where he really was lighting things up. So... Marcus May, I really, really think is going to have a very solid year for us this upcoming year. I think he'll be utilized effectively within this scheme because I really trust Sulla. I really, really do him what he's doing. So Marcus May, I'm looking forward to him. Now, now we got to talk about Ashton Davis. Listen, another guy, Ashton Davis. Listen, now I look at Ashton Davis and I say to myself, with May not getting a deal done, you know, this season, maybe next season the Jets work something out with them. I feel like there's almost a little pressure on Davis because say something happens and they're not able to work out a deal with May next offseason, this has got to be the season where we see more out of Ashton Davis. It almost pushes him into a role where he's got to mature into something because if Ashton Davis busts out or turns out to just not be the guy and you let Marcus May walk out the door, then uh, you're resetting yourself as the safety position because there's really no one after Ashton Davis where you can look at and be like, yeah, this is the next guy up. Like, there's really nothing there. So I look at Ashton Davis and I say to myself, last season when we did see him before the injury, he looked solid. There was some play, some, you know, some really things, some things about him where we were like, okay, this is a guy that we can hang our hat on. He's all right in, all right in coverage at times. Um, you know, we saw some solid moves, but there was some plays where it was like, whoa, you know, and again, he's a rookie. 
He's learning. That's how the NFL kind of works, particularly if you're playing within the secondary. You know, we see young corners, young safeties get cooked and stuff, but there was a clip, <laughs> and I'm sure it haunted him all season, of him getting spun around in a circle by a wide receiver that was breaking away from him. It was ugly, man. <laughs> it was ugly. But I tell you what, you know, he did play decently, all right, uh, especially before his injury because, uh, you know, he did have an injury and it costed him some time. Uh, I think he ended up with somewhere in like 36 tackles. I think he had a, a fumble recovery as well. So I'm looking to see Ash and Davis just continue to grow up on his performance last season and stay healthy. That's a big thing as well uh, for him this year. I want to see if he's going to be able to, you know, complete a full season without ending up on the injury list. But Ashton Davis really, you know, has shown us something. He's got ability. He is explosive. He's a guy that can lay the lumber as well, too. He needs to get a little bit more of a feel uh, within that coverage situation. But again, with the coaching staff that we have and the way that I think guys can get coached up under, you know, the situation we have, again, with a lot of guys in the staff, I think he's going to be all right. So Ashton Davis is a guy I'm really looking to see put on this upcoming season. Next guy I want to speak about, LaMarcus Joyner. Listen, this is not a veteran guy who's a versatile safety who could be moved around. He could be in the mix, man. And this is a guy that... If Ashton Davis sleeps, I could see this guy pushing and maybe taking the starting spot, you know, away from Ashton Davis. I could. LaMarcus Joyner has some talent there. He really, really does. He was a guy that we brought in, you know, so I'm excited about him as well. The final guy that I want to talk about at our safety position, man, is Sherrod Nesman. Listen, Sherrod Nesman is a guy that has experience within the current system that we're going to be running within this 4-3. And he's a guy that a lot of people look at and say to themselves, okay, Here's a guy that can come in, he's a solid safety, he's got some movement, he's versatile, he can do different things, but he's also a guy that's going to make an impact on special teams. I think that's one of the things that's really going to help this guy make the roster is his impact on special teams. So Sherrod Nesman is a guy that I want to see you know, what they're going to do with him. Also, within our new scheme as well as we've seen in the past, I want to see if they put maybe three safeties on the field. So we could end up at times seeing... Marcus May, Ashton Davis, and, you know, LaMarcus Joyner on the field at the same time. So, yeah, this safety position is something that I'm excited to see. Uh, we got some guys that can really do a lot of different things, and there's some guys, like I said, Ashton Davis, who we're trying to figure out, okay, can this kid do these things consistently? You know what I'm saying? So please comment down below, folks. Let me know how you folks feel about the safety position. What are your thoughts about Marcus May? How are you feeling about this situation? You know, with the contract, the deadline is now passed. There's still nothing done. How do you feel about Ashton Davis? Do you think that this is the year that we really see something out of him? What are your thoughts about LaMarcus Joyner? How are you feeling about Sherrod Nesman as well and the possible impact? that he could end up making on special teams. So comment down below. Let me know what you folks think. You folks have a good one. Peace.